I have with me here the newest member of the OnePlus Nord family, the Nord 4. And I have some mixed feelings about this. Let's talk about it. Okay, so a quick disclaimer before we start. Uh, this is sort of a first impressions video about the OnePlus Nord 4. Since I've had this device only for a couple of days as of filming this video, I'll follow up with an in-depth review very soon in which we'll talk about the cameras, the performance, and how the Nord 4 fares against the competition. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon while you're at it. So the Nord 4. This one is launching almost exactly after a year since the Nord 3, and the first thing you're going to notice is the design. Obviously, right off the bat, I'm really loving the design. The Nord 4 has something that truly sets it apart from all the other phones out there. A 5G phone with a metal unibody. And let me tell you, this feels good to hold. I mean, would you just look at that? Not only this feels premium, but has good grip as well. And being all metal, I'm sure this is going to be more durable than glass. One interesting thing to note here is that the color on the back is not linear. It sort of fades into this icy gray color, as you can see. Now, OnePlus says that they had to completely redesign the interior of the phone in order to place the new compact antenna so that the 5G signals could pass through easily. And they're really not taking any risks with the 5G connectivity. There are tons of antenna bands on this device. There's also some software magic happening behind the scenes, which will help you regain your network quicker if you happen to lose them in a lift or something. And although I totally love the design of the Nord 4, it kind of reminds me of the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 3. I, I don't know, maybe it's just me. What do you guys think about the design? Let me know down in the comments. On the bottom of the phone, you'll find the USB-C charging port to charge the massive 5500mAh battery. There's also the speaker grill and the SIM card slot. The Nord 4 also has an official IP65 rating, which means it can handle dust and light water sprays without any problem. The Nord 3, which I also have, is only rated till IP54, so this one is definitely a step up in that regard. Alright, so the back of the phone is beautiful and functional, but what about the front? You know, the one thing that you'll actually use to interact with your phone? OnePlus has always used some of the best displays on their phones, and this one is no different. It's a 6.74 inch 10-bit AMOLED panel with a 120Hz refresh rate. The colors are vibrant and well saturated, the images and videos look amazing and there are no weird color shifts that I've noticed. Also the bezels on the Nord 4 are quite slick, but if you look closely you can see that the bottom one is a little bit thicker than the rest of the sides. And wrapping the design on the front is the 16 megapixel front facing punch hole cam. Now let's talk about what's powering the Nord 4. It has the new Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 3 under the hood and my version has 8GB of RAM and 256GB of UFS 4 memory. There's also a 12 and probably a 16GB version as well and that's kind of one of my issues with this device. I feel like the base variant of the Nord 4 should have been offered with 12GB of RAM instead of the 8. And there's a valid reason that I say this. OnePlus claims that the Nord 4 will be as fast 6 years down the line as it was on day 1. And with 8GB of RAM, I kinda doubt it. But the 7 Plus Gen 3 processor is an excellent choice in my opinion. It's got plenty of power, is quite efficient and can easily handle some of the most popular games out there. The Nord 3 however was powered by a Dimensity 9000 chipset which was a flagship grade chip from MediaTek. But the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 3 is an upper mid-range chipset from Qualcomm. But even then, the Snapdragon chip is faster and more efficient than the Dimensity 9000. So that's a clear win in this scenario. And lastly, let's talk about the rear camera situation on the Nord 4. Being a filmmaker, you can imagine how important cameras are to me. I mean, I live and breathe cameras all day, so having a good and potent camera system in my pocket at all times is very crucial to me. I do not demand the absolute best tech or the latest innovations in my camera. I like how OnePlus has dropped all the gimmicks from the past and served us with two actually usable modules. There's no depth sensing camera here and the infamous 2 megapixel macro unit is finally gone. What you do get is a 50 megapixel Sony LYT600 sensor along with an 8 megapixel ultra wide unit which is also from Sony. There's no dedicated telephoto camera here but you can still capture at 2x with the 50 megapixel main unit which just crops in on the sensor so you don't lose any details. Overall my initial impressions about the Nord 4 are fairly positive given the price point at which this will launch. I'm going to test out the Nord 4 thoroughly in the coming days and will come up with a full review soon in which we'll talk about the battery life, the cameras and actual day to day performance of this one. So stay tuned for that and if you like this video make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.